So I just picked up these new studio monitors and I'm really pleased with them, but I think I can improve the listening experience if I raise them up to ear level. So I made my own studio monitor stands to improve that. Turns out these are really expensive online. I figured I could just build something uh, that's straightforward enough. So first I needed to determine how high I wanted them to be. So I just stacked them on some books and then sat at my chair at my planned height until it seemed like they were nicely at ear level. Then took a quick measurement of that and this was gonna be my target height for the design. As for construction, it's really a pretty simple design. You'll see how it comes together uh, in a bit. And I used pretty much everything with these one by six pine shelving boards. Uh, these are really cheap, but still um, solid enough that you can put them together and um, you know, the, the stands aren't super heavy, so the strength wasn't a huge consideration. I was also using pocket holes for the design, which is another way to streamline and uh, make this as straightforward as possible. As you can probably tell, I am not a woodworker, um, but more or less saw this project as a way to get a feel for my tools and um, do something fun and save a little bit of money for my desk setup. These are one by two boards. Uh, it's the same thickness, which is about three quarters of an inch, um, but these uh, were useful to create a little bit of extra support, and you'll see on the final design how these fit into place. So here I'm just kind of assembling after I've made the cuts <coughs> according to the design, and um, this will give you an idea how the final product will look. Not assembling anything at this point, but just making sure everything kind of lines up as expected. And then from this, I kind of deconstructed it, but used the general idea as a guide of where to put the pocket holes. Now, pocket holes are an obliquely angled um, channel for screws to go in, and it makes it really easy to, to join two boards together. When planning this way, it's important to take into consideration the spacing and order with which you are going to assemble it. And then here's my final one where I'll be attaching the top shelf to that back brace. It's easier to sand these, um, kind of round off those edges before you put them together. Um, so I'm just kind of giving these a quick cleaning. And then these stickers that you might get on your Lowe's or Home Depot products, they're impossible to peel off, so I just uh, take the sander to them. And while I'm not putting a lot of emphasis on the finish of these, I still want them to look a little bit decent. So this is the pocket hole jig. And what you can see is there's a uh, dedicated clamp, and this is by Craig, K-R-E-G, that goes into place and then it has a special drill bit that you will put through the jig. Really, these should be <laughs> clamped to a table, but since I was drilling so many of these and making two shelves, it was just faster for me to hold it down in my hand and carefully uh, move it over. Um, this is actually pretty well controlled. It pops right off. This creates a lot of sawdust, so it's good to do outside. You can see how that works. So a, a screw will slide right in there. For these larger pieces, there's actually two um, pocket holes on the jig, and so I ended up doing both for the wider spaced boards. Then when it's time to assemble, you just switch to the uh, bit, and I'm using one and a quarter length screws, um, and Craig screws also differentiate the wood type, and these, this is a soft wood. So now putting together, I ended up wanting to put those one by twos, so those thinner boards, um, and attach those first, because otherwise it would be really hard to do. So I just kind of lined it up where it's gonna end up being, held it down. And the nice thing about the pocket holes, especially with this Craig uh, design of screw, is once it locks into place, it self tightens really well, um, and it makes it a lot easier to do. So then I lined up our back piece, and put that in place. And 
then for those supports with the one by twos, you can kind of see how they were angling in, but that's totally fine. I just turned it around and then created some traction before I ended up securing them in. So that's me pulling that out so it lines up flush with that edge. And then holding that tension down with my left hand, using my other hand to just drive that screw in. And that tension actually seems to give it a good amount of uh, stability. I just turned around, did the same on this side. And so you can see that this is a pretty, kind of a freestyle way to make things and put it together, um, which was fun for me, who just wanted to kind of knock this out in an afternoon and doesn't have a lot of experience. And then there's the final piece. Pretty pleased with the overall stability and structure of it. And I think it should work out quite well. So just repeated that for the other stand. And it seems like the support's gonna be more than enough for these pretty lightweight speakers. Now to address the pocket holes, it does create that gap. So I picked up some wood filler um, and made sure it was a stainable variety because I do plan on staining these entire things. And then just took some um, uh, time to kind of fill these in and scrape them flush as possible. This does take a little bit of practice and you'll get a knack for it to move a little bit faster. There's other ways to plug these, like buying preformed plugs for the pocket holes. But I thought this was pretty easy and I already had the filler. So here they are once they're filled and sanded down. For the stain, I always like using a pre-stain. Uh, this helps, uh, especially with kind of a lower quality wood, give it a nice, more even finish. And I had some other things I wanted to stain too. I wasn't quite sure which color to use, so I practiced on those first. Those are just some plant stands that I had made with pocket holes as well. I ended up going with the uh, darker variety, and I think this will actually match my desk much better. This is only one coat. Um, it included me laying it on and then wiping it off any excess stain uh, after about five minutes or so. And then once that was dry, did a coat of polyurethane. So here we are prior to having them uh, in place. And this is the finished product. I did want to have a couple little, um, an extra touch, and that is to add these uh, felt pads. These are just meant for underneath furniture, such as a chair or something like that. And I just put four on the bottom of each. This might help uh, prevent scratching from any movement that it would have on the desk, but also I think create a little bit of a barrier for any resonance that would otherwise be transferred down through the desk. So I'm thinking this could improve our sound quality as well. And it was pretty cheap. So when putting these on the desk, I was really pleased with how it looked. Um, the, the kind of flush matching width, I think is an important component here. And I did like that it matched the desk pretty well otherwise. And I didn't design this, but it makes a pretty nice uh, drink holder underneath there too. It might keep the rings off the desk. And there we go. I hope you found this useful and maybe inspiring to try to make something like this for yourself and your home audio setup.